Code with discountjuices.com. Today is another exciting episode for you, and this one has been over 20 years in the making, actually. What I'm going to do in this episode is actually explain to you guys the best juicer for you. Now, I've made other videos before, the best juicer, this and that, like years ago, but here's the thing. As times change, as new juicers come out, the best juicer is always changing. It's like if somebody asks you, what's the best iPhone? So you might say, oh, I like the iPhone 4, but you know, the iPhone 6S is out now, and that's the best, right? Well, in some ways it is, and in some ways some people like the I the old iOS. But anyways, what I've done today is actually selected from over 20 different juicers I have here, and I got the best of the best juicers of each category here to share with you guys, right? And uh, what I'm going to do in this episode is not just say, oh, buy this when it's the best, because that would be negligent of me, because I don't know your specific needs, and just you watching YouTube videos, it's hard to you know, get that one-on-one -on -one connection to figure out your specific needs. So what I'm going to go ahead and go over are all the different criteria that you will want to take into consideration before buying a juicer and pick which criteria are the most important for you and then select the juicer that's best going to meet your needs. I mean, that's simply what I do. It's like if you go to a store, you know, and you're going to buy a dress or an outfit, you know, whether you're a guy or a girl, you got to match the outfit with the intended purpose of the outfit, right? And a lot of other factors like if you like the color and if your friends are going to like it and who knows what other kind of stuff. I don't know how to pick clothes, but I do know how to pick juicers. So anyways, you're going to want to watch this whole video to learn all about all the different ones because literally you're not going to learn this anywhere else. I've learned all these things and I've experienced using the juicers almost every day. Actually, yesterday I used you know, the juicer three times for every single meal I ate came out of the juicer and I want to stop right there for a second you know and let you guys know that the juicer is not some miraculous kitchen appliance that's going to change your life right what is going to change your life is by including more fresh fruits and vegetables in your life which is what the juicer allows you to do the juicer is my number one favorite appliance in the kitchen because it allows you to concentrate the amount of nutrition you're taking in in the most powerful foods on the planet, the fruits and vegetables, which most people just shove to the side. They shove it on their side salad, they never eat it. They eat their steak and potatoes and corn dogs and hamburgers and chicken McNuggets first and never eat their vegetables. So this does the exact opposite of what the standard American diet will do. It allows you to maximize the most nutrient dense, phytonutrient rich foods on the planet. And that's what these simply are. They're simply tools to allow you to increase and maximize the amount of nutrition you're getting in. Because in this day and age, in my opinion, the standard American is just deficient in nutrition. And people's bodies are being starved. People are overfed. That means they're eating a lot of food, high in calories, but they're undernourished because they're not getting the you know different vitamins, trace minerals, minerals, antioxidants, um, enzymes in the food because all the food is so highly processed. Now when you have your own fresh produce and you process it yourself, you're gonna get the highest quality nutrition of them all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of the criteria that you will want to take into consideration before buying a juicer. And we're gonna go over each criteria and go over each one of these juicers and which one is better or worse for specific criteria. And it's, this is a complicated subject, right? So before I get into the different criteria, and you guys should take out a paper and pen and take some notes here so you can jot down what's important to you and what's not, um, we're going to go ahead and introduce the different machines. These are the top of the top machines on the market at this time, 2016, in the beginning. Now, later in the year, you know, new machines are probably going to come out, so I don't know. But in 2016, you know, this is the latest information. All right, so best centrifugal ejection uh, juicer with a wide feed chute that I've tested to date uh, for the price performance is the Lequip 215XL. That's a centrifugal ejection. We're going to talk about each of the different styles in a minute. Next we have the two best horizontal single auger juicers on the market. This is the Solo Star 4 and the Omega NC800. The next kinds of juicers we have that we're going to show you guys are the vertical single auger juicers that I must 
have a disclaimer. <laughs> These are my favorite type of juicers on the market at this time uh, for many reasons. But we have the Slow Star Juicer, we have the Kubings Whole Slow Juicer, and we have the Omega VSJ843. And uh, finally, over on this last juicer here, this is the best twin gear juicer on the market that I've tested to date. This is the Green Star Elite Juicer. Now these are all different ways of juicing, although they all do the same thing, much like a car. You guys might have a sports car, you might have a truck, you might have a minivan, you might have a hatchback, you know, or coupe. And they all will get you from point A to B, but they'll do it a little bit differently. And if you're a construction guy and you got to haul all your construction stuff around, you probably got to have a truck in like, you know, a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> Not going to work for you, right? And that's the same with juicing. And that's why it's really important for me to, to share this information with you guys. Because manufacturers, you know, some manufacturers only have one or two juicers. They might say, this is the best juicer, buy this. Well, you know what, the fact of the matter is it's not always the best in every possible situation. You know, I wish there was one juicer that did everything. That juiced everything really well, yielded well, had highest nutrition, was easy to clean. Heck, I wish it was self-cleaning. It'd make my job a lot easier, so I want to make these videos explain to you guys the best juicer to buy, right? And before I go any further, I want to encourage you guys, if you guys like the work that I do, if you guys enjoy this video and learn from it, right, I want to encourage you guys to support me, right? By supporting me, you're allowing me to continue my online education that's so important to me so that I can make a difference in the world because other manufacturers, other you know, people that sell juicers, big box stores, they simply don't do this for you guys, right? So I'm trying to help you guys out because my life was literally saved by juicing and eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. I almost lost my life when I was in my 20s. I had spinal meningitis and basically, long story short, I had to make you know, major dietary changes in my uh, you know, and in my life so that I could be healthy and live. And I'm so glad to be alive today. And I want to thank one of my mentors, uh, Jay Cordich, formerly known as the Juice Man. You know, he got me on the track of juicing and how beneficial it is. And now I'm here to spread the message to you guys. So if you guys like my work, please support me by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. That's very important because if you purchase anywhere else, it doesn't help support me to continue this work to educate you guys to make the change in the world that I want to see, you know, which is just people just eating real food, man. All right, so the other thing you're going to notice is that these are all the major brands that I've mentioned, you know. There's always an XYZ company with a new juicer coming out, and people always ask me, John, what about this brand? What about this brand? And there's so many new, basically what I call knockoff juicers from China coming out, you know, and they're, they're literally a quarter of the price of some of these guys here, maybe a third of the price, half the price, it varies. And the thing is this, I mean, if you guys get a knockoff Gucci purse, it's not the same quality as a real Gucci purse, right? It could look the same, appear the same, but you know, in Gucci purses, they're probably, you could probably get a knockoff and, and handle it, you know, but in juicers, let me tell you guys, I've tested a lot of the inexpensive, cheap Chinese knockoffs. They're not worth their weight. Number one, they're going to produce horrible yields. It, they're going to be frustrating. They're going to break on you. They're going to have a short warranty. So you want to stick with a machine that has a nice long warranty. Some of the machines on this table, which I'll get into in a minute, have as long as 15 years on the warranty. I mean, that is unheard of in the small kitchen appliance realm. It's only these juicers that have these long warranties because the companies are there to stand behind them because they know you're making an investment. It's an investment in the most important thing you guys got. Not all the money in the bank, not your house, right? Your health. I learned at a young age, almost losing my life in the hospital, that if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And so I want to encourage you guys, I know the juicers, for some of you guys, is a stretch to invest, to make the investment, but it's the most important investment you've got your health, because without your health, you can't have a job, you can't love your loved ones, you can't take your dog for a walk, you can't go to Disneyland with your kids, you can't do anything. And so I want you guys really to value your health above all else, and yeah. Some of these juices are expensive, but you get what you guys pay for. I mean, this is an old adage, and it definitely holds true with the juicers on the table today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the criteria, right? <laughs> the number one, and this criteria is in order of importance to me or what many people may feel are important to them, right? So the number one thing, consideration that you should have when purchasing a juicer is yield, super important like if you're going to juice carrots and you get a juicer that's designed to juice you know wheatgrass it's not going to do so well so yield's the most important factor when selecting a juicer now 
it's really difficult for me to explain the yield, you know, just like, oh, this makes the best yield or this makes the most yield. It's difficult because every different juicer and every different produce type is going to yield a little bit differently. What I can say are some generalities here, and in general, the yield on the Green Star Elite on hard vegetables and leafy greens will basically blow away anything else on the table. So if like the most important thing for you guys is yield, you're going to want to go with the Green Star Elite, right? Uh, you know, uh, aside from that, uh, you know, that's on most vegetables and leafy greens when juiced together. Now, if you want to juice just straight leafy greens on their own, then you're going to want to go with a horizontal single auger juicer, one of these guys, the NC800 or the uh, Solo Star 4. Now, in my testing, and you want to check my past videos, I have over 400 videos comparing juicers side by side so you guys know you can dial in which one's even the best. Um, between these two guys, when I tested the Solo Star 4 juicer, made more yield than the NC800 on the leafy greens, which would be similar to juicing wheatgrass. Now, if you want to juice just carrots, you know, uh, like hard vegetables, the Lequip 215XL is going to actually do a fairly good job at juicing hard vegetables. The problem is this guy doesn't juice wheatgrass and on leafy greens it's going to really be horrible. Now if you guys just say, John I want to juice a little bit of everything, fruits, hard vegetables and leafy greens, that's where these guys come in. These are the vertical single auger juicers. This is the latest technology advance in juicers in my opinion. These are the juicers that I use mostly every day in my kitchen because they, they juice a wide range of things. They juice nice firm fruits, they juice hard vegetables, and they juice the leafy greens, you know, all fairly well. And these guys will juice wheatgrass, although if you want to juice a lot of wheatgrass, you know, I would recommend a horizontal single auger. But these are the verticals, right? So that sums up the yield. And, you know, for specific yield testing, be sure to check my past episodes. I can't really get into more than that than just kind of giving you a summary. Otherwise, this video is going to be three hours, and it's probably already going to be one hour, all right? <laughs> So the next criteria, number two, that's important for a lot of people is the nutrition in the juice. Besides just yield, because the juicer could make a lot of yield, but it has less nutrition and less vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants in the juice. How much nutrition is in the juice? Because I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I'm going to take the time to juice, I want to have the maximum nutrition for my produce buck, right? I mean... Some of the study that I've been doing lately is all about the phytochemicals and phytonutrients. These are the pigments in the foods, you know, the lycopene in the tomatoes, the beta carotene in the carrots, you know, the lutein and zeaxanthin in your leafy greens, all these different carotenoids and things in the food really are, are protective and disease protective uh, for us in, in many of the research studies that are coming out, right? So every juicer makes a little bit different nutrition, but here's the general guidelines. In general, but not always, the slower the RPM, the slower the machine moves, the higher nutrition it's going to have. So this one, you know, runs 10,000 RPMs. In general, because it spins so fast, it's going to bombard the nutrients in the juice, you know, certain of the most valuable ones, which are the phytochemicals and phytonutrients. You know, it's going to bombard them with air. It's going to oxidize them, so they're going to have less nutrition. Whereas the rest of the machines on the table all run at a lower RPM. You know, under 150, some are even around, you know, in the 40s RPMs, revolutions per minute, very slow. This is going to maximize the amount of nutrition in the juice uh, that's extracted. Now, once again, things are not always black, white, good, bad, right, wrong. It, it varies, right? So what I can say is that the only company <laughs> that's done testing on the nutrition is the Trives company with the Green Star Elite. And they have studies that show, you know, the nutrients that are derived out of the Green Star Elite is basically the top of the top overall in most categories, in most situations, um, you know, uh, compared to any other juicer on the market that I've seen, you know, the data that I've seen to date. So if you want the most nutrition, this guy is the answer. So, I mean, already yield and nutrition, that guy's the answer. But that, it fares well in those categories, but in some of the categories coming up next, it's not going to do so well. But after that, then, I would say all the auger juicers, whether that's a horizontal auger or a vertical auger, they all run in the same RPM range, you know, mid-40s to 80, you know, maxing out. And I would say in that RPM range, it, they're all about the same nutrition. Now, how the juicer works and extracts the juice is another very important criteria. So, for example, if I'm juicing straight leafy greens in a vertical juicer, 
it's going to tend to make a lot of foam. Now, foam is basically a, a, a juice that has oxygen added to it. And so that's going to be a thing that's going to negate some of the nutrition, right? So if I'm juicing, once again, straight leafy greens, if I do it in these guys, it's going to minimize the foam. Now, if you're going to juice, like, leafy greens with hard vegetables in these guys and rotate when you're feeding them, that's going to minimize the foam. So that's going to be really good. So anyways, to sum up nutrition, I'd say this has the highest nutrition. This, this, these ones have the next set and, you know, we could nitpick all day long over is that one better than this one or whatever. I'm not even going to go into that because here's the thing. <laughs> Other manufacturers have not done testing that I've seen to date. I mean, this company did testing that says you could store your juice made in a cold pressed or in their juice or for up to 72 hours. So then every other company makes a slow juice and just says, oh yeah, you could store your slow juice for up to 72 hours. I'm like, where's the data? I want to see the test results. They're like, oh, the other company did that. So if you really want proven stuff, this is the machine to get because none of these other machines have data that I've seen to date, you know, over a wide range of, you know, variables so that I'll know. So I'm just kind of surmising on how the juice tastes to me when I'm juicing it because we taste nutrition. I mean, you taste the juice out of a Liquip 215XL, it doesn't taste as nutritious. It's not as like full bodied as a, a juice made with the slow machine. And actually, just the other day, I was uh, using the Green Star Elite and I was amazed at just how much more richer and, and deeper the juice tasted than out of like a, a auger style machine, right? So that hopefully will sum up nutrition for you guys. The next thing I want to talk about is how long does the juicer take to clean? That's probably one of the top things that comes up. Because here's the thing, if the juicer is hard to clean and you guys aren't going to use it, then it's not even worth having the, the machine that makes the best yield or the most nutrition in the juice if you're not even going to use it. And I'm going to be frank with you guys, like, I do a lot for my health, but one of the things I will not do is invest like 15 minutes in the kitchen just to clean the juicer or 10 minutes. That's not me. It might be one of you guys and that's really cool, but that's not me. I'm not going to do that. So it's important to me to have a machine that's easy to clean. And, you know, manufacturers throw out that easy to clean word all the time. And this is advertised as easy to clean. And, okay, well, it's easier to clean than, like, a barbecue grill that you got to scrub off because it's got all the fried on, you know, acrylamides and <laughs> heterocyclic amines and charred black stuff, which is really not healthy for you guys. <laughs> you know, this is way easier to clean than that. But at the same time, this is probably the most intricate you know, slow juicer to clean. It's going to take you the most amount of time to clean, whereas some of these other ones are going to take you less time. So now we're going to go ahead and get into how long it takes to clean some of these machines. And I've cleaned all these machines, so I kind of know I can give you some ballpark figures. As you guys know, the Green Star Elite will take the longest amount of time. And then we'll go within categories. So within this category here, the vertical juicers, uh, the VSJ843 is the easiest to clean. It takes me approximately three minutes. I've timed it. It has a few less parts and nooks and crannies than these other two guys. Uh, next, I'd say probably the uh, Slow Star is a little bit easier to clean than the Kuving Soul Slow Juicer, but they're almost tied up. And then going over to this category here, um, definitely the NC800, way easier to clean than the uh, Solo Star 4 due to the massive amount of screen area, which is probably one of the reasons why it gets more yield. And then over on the Centrifugal Ejection, you know, some triple ejections, in my opinion, are not that hard to clean. There's three main parts you got to clean. You just got to remember to scrub out the screen with a brush, not a sponge, but a nice nylon bristle brush. Many of these slow juicers, actually, or all of them, come with its own nylon uh, bristle, stiff bristle brush. It's kind of like an oversized toothbrush that really could get in there and scrub the screen. And I want to encourage you guys, when cleaning your juicer, you know, do it right after you're done juicing. Don't like drink your juice and then clean your juicer. Clean your juicer and then drink your juice because the longer you let the juicer sit with the pulp stuck in the screen and the juice in there, it's gonna just like dry up and then be significantly more difficult to get out. So minimally, you know, soak the parts in water, a dish wash, you know, a dish pan with some soap and hot water if you're not gonna clean it immediately. And oh, so the easiest juicer to clean on this whole table is right here. This is the Omega NC800. It takes me about a minute and a half to clean. It's the easiest one on the table. Maybe next easiest I'd go with the VSJ. And then maybe I'd say actually, you know, the centrifugal ejection, that's not too bad to clean in my opinion. All right. So aside from cleaning, another thing that's very important for people is how long does it take to use? Because people don't need to realize that the overall juicing process is how long it takes to juice plus how long it takes to clean which is the overall total amount of time. 
So for example, just yesterday, I juiced two pineapples and a pound of cranberries in this very juicer right here. It took me about 18 minutes from the time I started to the time I cleaned up. And so that's not a lot of time, and that includes juicing two pineapples and a pound of cranberries. And clean up! I mean, that's nothing. You guys got to invest 15 minutes in your health, right, to, to include more of these phytonutrient-rich fruits and vegetables. I mean, yesterday I had cranberries, and they say cranberries are good for, you know, urinary tract infections and all this stuff, right? And I'm just eating a wide variety of foods and getting these into me so that I don't have any health challenges in the future. So yeah, so yeah, so anyways, how long to use? So some of these machines take longer to use than others. So the fastest machine on this whole table by far is this guy. It's a Lequip 215XL. This has a nice three inch wide feed chute, runs at a high speed. You crank stuff through there, the juice spits out, the pulp comes out the back, boom, you're done. I mean, I could juice, I could probably make a juice, clean up in this guy, a nice glass, five, six minutes max, right? Five, six minutes max. The next fastest one to use on the table are probably the vertical single auger juicers. And depending on what you're juicing, the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer with its 3 inch wide feed chute may be the quickest, but it may not be depending on what you're juicing, right? Um, otherwise, the uh, Slow Star is probably right up there uh, after the Kuvings and then the VSJ. But once again, it depends on what you're juicing. Then I'd probably go with the NC800 over here as being how long to use, and then I'd go with the uh, Solo Star 4, and then finally the Green Star Elite. Now, why does a Green Star Elite take longer to use? Basically, uh, for juicing hard vegetables, you're having to push the hard vegetable into the feed chute, into the gears to get them to grind up. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. You know, with these guys, you still need to also push things in you know, one piece at a time, and that's why I really prefer the vertical juices because these guys, for the most part, are auto feeding. You put the produce in there as the machine is rotating, it basically chunks off, bites off a piece of produce, it sucks it in the machine, it juices it. So instead of you sitting there, sitting there pushing, 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 feeding stuff in, you literally just are dropping stuff in, chopping, dropping, chopping, dropping, and it's just auto feeding. This to me is a major time saver and that's one of the reasons why I like the vertical machines myself. So that's on how long to use. Now another factor I know is important for many of you guys is, John, how much does the juicer cost, man? Because I don't got that much money, right? Well, once again, I want to encourage you guys, you know, make the investment in your health. Even if you got to charge in on that credit card, pay off your credit card, you know, the sooner you can get a juicer, the sooner you can get more fresh fruits and vegetable juices in you, the sooner, in my opinion, you'll be losing weight, getting healthier, having more energy, having more mental clarity. Think about it. If you have more mental clarity and focus on your work, whatever your work is, you're going to be more productive. And if you're more productive at work, that means you're going to probably make more money <laughs> and just have an overall happier level of life. Or if you got little kids, rug rats running around, right, you can't keep up with them, let me tell you, you get on the juice, the fruit, yeah, fresh fruit and vegetable juice, not any other kind of juice. You can be able to better keep up with your kids too. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for that day because I'll be able to keep up with my kids. I mean, I was keeping up with my friends' kids when I was visiting them. I was climbing trees with a little six-year-old or whatever, and that was fun. I'm just a big kid. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the cost. So the cost. So here it is. The cost. The least expensive juicer on the table is the Lequip 215XL, and this is probably the next cheapest set of machines, the horizontal single augers. Then the next, uh, you know, uh, expensive is the vertical single augers, and then the most expensive is the twin gear juicer, and that's the cost. And you know, I don't want cost to be an issue for you guys. Like, I want you guys to like. I know it's going to be a stretch for some of you guys to afford a machine that's expensive, but I want you guys to get the machine that's going to do the best job for you and work the best for you that you will use every day. Because even if I say the most expensive machine, but you don't use it, I didn't do you guys a favor. You know, and I didn't do myself a favor because I want to sell you guys the right juicer. And that's why I invest so much time in making these videos to educate you guys with what I've learned over the last 20 years of me juicing almost every single day. And I've been juicing since I was a kid, actually. But I, was, I started this seriously about 20 years ago, but my parents started me out juicing, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago <laughs> when I was a little kid because we had a centrifugal ejection juicer that my parents would just crank in carrot juice. So I remember, you know, I was probably like six or something, 
drinking fresh carrot juice when I was a kid, so I'm glad my parents got me started in juicing, you know, to know how good it can be and to get real food in us in this day and age of processed foods. All right, so that was the cost. Now, another factor that may be important for a lot of you guys is the noise. Some of you guys may have roommates, family members, you know, and you want to juice early in the morning, or maybe you have paper-thin walls in your apartment complex, and you can't make a lot of noise where the guy next door will be like banging on the wall for you to be quiet. <laughs> or maybe you're just noise-sensitive, man. You've blown out your, your ears with, like, too much rock music, and you just don't like loud sounds, right? Now we're going to get into the juicer that's the loudest, and it's simply the Liquip 215XL. Now, after the Liquip 215XL that runs at a high speed, then some of the other machines that run at a lower speed are definitely quieter, and I know the easiest one to say is the quietest. Now, the quietest one to me is the Omega VSJ843. It doesn't have the standard gearing that the normal vertical augers do, so it's a bit quieter. It runs at 43 RPMs, and maybe the next one would be something like the... Uh, Solo Star 4 and the Green Star Elite are fairly quiet. I'd say the vertical auger juicers with the gearing because some of the gearing, it makes a little bit of gearing noise, but in general, these guys are really quiet, right? So I want to encourage you guys to get a slow juicer because they're quiet. They're going to you know, be quieter, so you'll be able to juice when your roommates or family members are sleeping in the morning so that you guys can get the fresh juice in you. Another criteria that you will want to take into consideration before buying any of these juicers is you got to know what you will be juicing. That's one of the most important things and people that just say buy this juicer is the best without finding out your specific needs, I mean I think that should be a crime in my opinion. There's so much, so much misinformation online when you hear people make videos about different things about juicers. It upsets me. So that's keeps me motivated to tell the truth to, as to what I know doing this as a lifestyle, like every day researching it, every day using machines every day, going to trade shows and finding out the latest and greatest and why it's better, why it's not better, and, and looking at some of the studies you know, out there. So what are you juicing? It's super important. So for example, if you're going to juice like hard vegetables like carrots, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these guys, although they will juice hard carrots. Hard carrots, like the centrifugal ejection, they really do well. I mean, it, it aerates your juice, which we're going to talk about, you know, probably a little bit. But um, they do really well. Also, the Green Star Elite, hard carrots do really well. The vertical juicers, you know, they do pretty good too. Maybe the yield's not quite as high as these two guys, but it is a decent job. Now, the VSJ843 doesn't handle carrots too well. It tends to stop up, see so if they're reverse and unclog it and whatnot. But these two guys are more powerful. I'd say the the uh, Slow Star overall is the most powerful uh, juicer for juicing just straight up carrots. And then these guys will juice carrots, but I wouldn't really want to do that, any large volume of carrots, because you've got to sit there and once again push each carrot into the machine, which would be kind of a pain. Now another category of uh, food or produce that you will be juicing are the leafy greens. Now this to me is probably the most important category of food foods or produce you guys should be juicing after the vegetables. Why? Because the leafy greens have the most amount of phytochemicals and phytonutrients with the least amount of calories. So this is especially important if you're trying to lose weight, right? It has a lot of nutrition, but very little calories. <laughs> and in addition, the nutrition in the greens are, you can't compare them to any other food on the planet. I mean, there are different, you know, isocyothionates and all these other uh, properties, lutein, zeaxanthin, like for example in broccoli, they've identified nutri nutrients in broccoli that, you know, fight cancer, right? It's super important. So we want to get these leafy greens in because most people simply do not eat enough leafy greens. So like on average, I'm a slow juicer, right? One pound of leafy greens will equal about one cup of juice on average. And that's why these guys are very important. You want to get a slow juicer if you want to really focus in on and do any significant amount of leafy greens. Now, if you want to juice like the most amount of leafy greens, you're going to want to go with one of these guys because these guys really do leafy greens the best. Now, if you want to do something like sprouts and microgreens, juice those guys. Once again, the horizontal auger juicers, they're going to do the best. And then, you know, then I'd probably go with uh, one of these guys. So if you're going to juice like the greens with hard vegetables, then the Green Star Elites, 
These guys don't, I mean, they'll juice straight greens, and actually the VSJ does straight greens the best out of a lot of the juicers here on the, that I've, uh, you know, tested. But in general, I like to also always mix up, you know, some vegetables with greens. So like celery, greens, and cucumber is a good mixture. And these guys will perform well. This guy will probably perform a little bit better. And these guys will perform quite adequately. So yeah, once again, know what you're going to juice. Now, if you're going to juice fruits, you know, I think it's better to eat fruits or blend your fruits, but I like to juice fruits sometimes because, you know, here it is. Drinking a fresh fruit juice that you make at home with your own juicer is way better than buying a Coca-Cola, a coffee, a kombucha, or, you know, any other kind of, like, sugar-filled beverage from the store because when you juice fresh fruits, you not only have the phytochemicals and phytonutrients, but when you make it at home without all this industrialized processing, you will be getting the soluble fiber and depending on the juicer, even some insoluble fiber in the juice. And that's very important to me. But the, basically to juice fruits, these guys, the vertical juicers, juice fruits the best. Maybe after that, maybe the, this one here, the Green Star Elite really is not a juicer if you want to juice like fruits on their own. You know, if you mix in some fruits with your hard veggies, it's going to do great. And likewise with these guys, you know, some fruits, these guys, the horizontal augers will juice fruits okay, but a lot of times it may just back up on you and give you a headache. And that's another reason why I like the vertical single auger machines. So another criteria that you should take into consideration before buying a juicer is how easy is a juicer to use? Some of these machines, right, you have to actually pre-cut the produce into small bits. You have to feed them in a certain ordering or the machine's not going to really work well. You have to, you know, uh, uh, feed the machine and push each produce item in. It can be very difficult, you know. So, uh, for example, on the vertical single augers, you need to pay a little bit more attention as to what you're juicing and when. So you always want to, you know, put soft produce items in first, like a, you know, a piece of apple, then some leafy greens, and then something like a hard carrot or some hard celery. And keep rotating those different items you know, uh, you know, soft, uh, you know, leafy greens, firmer, and then some hard vegetable matter to keep the machine working properly. Because if you juice like all the celery, all the greens, and all the apples, it's really not going to work that well because you need, really need to know how to use it properly. You know, with the centrifugal ejection, it's the most forgiving. You could shove anything in almost at any time and it's going to work fairly well. And then over on the Green Star Elite, once again, for best results, it's best to rotate your produce um, although, as long as you're not doing straight fruits, it's going to do fairly well. And then uh, these guys here, they're going to do pretty well also, you know. You just got to remember to rotate the produce. And once again, you know, some of these guys may require pre-cutting of the produce. You know, at least pre-cutting to fit in the feed chute. So, you know, of these two guys, uh, the Solo Star 4 has a smaller feed chute of probably any of the juicers here. So it's going to re require more cutting of certain produce items into small pieces. Now if you have a nice long carrot and the diameter is not bigger than one and a half inches, you can just put the whole carrot in there. But if you got a nice fat carrot, you're gonna have to cut it down the middle to put it in there. Leafy greens could be rolled up to stick in any of the feed shoots. But yeah, so how easy is a juicer to use, both preparation and actually when you're pushing each produce item in, or whether it's auto feeding, or whether you have to just lightly touch it to get it in contact with the fast spinning blade that's literally going to shred it to bits. Another criteria they may want to take into consideration that some manufacturers feel are very important, and to me, it's kind of important, but kind of not, is the feed chute size and is there a funnel, <laughs> right? So the feed chute size, I mean, this guy has a three inch wide feed chute, as does the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. So that makes basically uh, an easier job for you so that you don't have to cut certain produce items. So for example, in the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer, apples, tomatoes, pears, you don't have to cut them up. But even, even though it has a large feed chute, things like leafy greens should not just be shoved in there haphazardly. In my opinion, you should cut them into eighth inch or minimum quarter inch pieces. Otherwise, the strings of the leafy greens and the celery will get clogged up. Now with the Slow Star and the Omega VSJ843, the celery and the leafy greens won't really clog it up because they have actually changed the design to a second generation that's not really going to have that problem, you know, and with the Green Star Elite, you know, as long as it fits into the one and a half inch square feed chute, push it in there and it's going to basically juice it right up. 
Now, aside from the feed chute size, another thing that's important to me personally is it has a funnel. So all the machines on the table have funnels except the <laughs> Lequip 215XL and the Kubings Whole Slow Juicer. Although it has a larger feed chute, if you're juicing something small and cut up like little bits of you know, celery that you cut up to feed in there or cherry tomatoes you just want to be able to put in the funnel and have them funnel in at their own pace, you know, that's where a funnel is really required. And I've told the Kuvings to make a funnel and maybe in their next model they will. But this is really something that makes it more convenient and easy to use and that's why I really like the funnel. Uh, you know, the funnel on the Omega NC800 is actually the largest funnel so that makes feeding things in easier because you could stage things like bits of carrots to drop in or whatever you know, as you're juicing. The funnel on this guy is, you know, nice and deep, but it's not super large. I mean, I'm really partial to the funnel on the uh, Green Star Elite and the Omega VSJ843 that makes juicing a little bit easier. Now, another thing that should be an important criteria for you guys are, does the juicer do other things besides just juice fruits and vegetables, right? And this is very important because if you guys are trying to make lifestyle changes, which is more than just a diet, right? But you, you want to eat better but get healthier. You want to do more than just eat fresh fruit and vegetable juices. You want to maybe make things like, you know, uh, nut butters and make fresh baby food for your baby. Make things like almond milk or coconut milk or make fresh uh, salsa or grind your own garlic instead of having to buy the pre-ground garlic in the store that's been oxidized. You know, uh, make or or the favorite thing that most people like to do is make frozen banana or frozen fruit sorbets using 100% frozen fruit. Some of these machines will take that frozen banana that you basically uh, get them ripe when they're spotted up. You get them for super cheap at the grocery store. You peel them, you put them in the freezer, you pull them out once they're frozen. You put them through machine one of these machines with a blank plate. And when you put it through with a blank plate, out comes the end. It basically just homogenizes it, mushes it all up. So it comes out like the soft serve yogurt machine at the McDonald's that, in my opinion, is not healthy for you. But this is 100% fruit, so you're now eating 100% fruit instead of the soft serve ice cream, instead of the you know uh, dairy rich ice cream that's high in calories and high in artificial flavors, colors, and sweeteners. So you're eating healthier, and this is what a whole lifestyle change is about. It's about improving what you're doing in your life, so you can now substitute, you know, instead of your morning coffee or you know soda drink a fresh fruit or vegetable juice instead of your evening dessert you know have a fresh fruit sorbet that tastes just like ice cream one of my favorite recipes if you just put a whole bunch of frozen banana with some frozen blueberries in there oh man that's totally amazing so the machines that will do this task are the solo star 4 the nc800 the slow star juicer the kuvings whole slow juicer with optional um, attachment and the Green Star Elite machine. Virtually all the slow juicers here will do it except the Omega VSJ843 that's not an option they have not designed it to do that task. So that's the uh, sorbets as well as nut butters and uh, grinding um, attachment. All these machines will do it except this guy. Now the other thing that may be important for some of you guys is to get away from dairy products. You know, dairy uh, products may cause mucus for many people. You know, many people are allergic to dairy in this day and age, and a lot of people, you know, just may not digest it too well. You know, uh, Chinese people, for example, don't digest dairy so well. And also, you know, there's things in dairy that you may not want to be drinking, including artificial hormones and all this kind of stuff. So now what's really popular are nut milks and coconut milks. And some of these machines will allow you to make your own nut milks at home. So my picks for making nut milks would be like something like the VSJ843 or the Slow Star machine. They do it the best and then I'd probably go with the Green Star Elite. That does an amazing job. It gets the pulp amazingly dry. And then these guys. These guys will do nut milks but they're not really designed to, it, to do it. And it'll make like a watery nut milk because it's not really getting a full extraction first time through. So yeah, I'd go with Vertical One to do the nut milks. So yeah, some of these machines are quite versatile and they have other features. Now, the next criteria that's important to me and hopefully for you guys too is the warranty. If you go down to your local big box store, department store, buy a juicer, it may have a short 90 day, maybe one year warranty. 
The machines on the table are serious machines. These are the ones that you want to invest in because they have a long warranty. A lot of those Chinese knockoffs have short warranties because they, they design them to be throwaway juicers. These are not throwaway juicers. These are machines that you'll be able to pass down to your kids probably, right? So here's the thing. The Omega VSJ843, the Solo Star 4, and the NC800, they all have 15 year warranties. That's the longest warranty in the juicing industry. That's insane, 15 years. You'll still be juicing in their juicer that you buy today. Next, we got the Green Star Elite over here with a 12 year warranty. And then we have the uh, Slow Star Juicer with a 10 year warranty along with the Kuvings uh, Juicer. With a and even the Lequip 215XL Juicer over here has a 10 year warranty as well. Another criteria that may be important for you guys when selecting a juicer to purchase is what style of juicer is it? I mean, we all heard about all these terms, cold pressed, masticating, centrifugal. Well, I'm gonna refer you guys to watch a video where I go into an hour on talking about all the different types of juicers. Because within each juicer style, whether it's a centrifugal ejection, horizontal, single auger, vertical single auger, or twin gear, they all have their pros and cons, and I think that should be an important criteria for you guys you know, to know which juicer style will best meet your needs. And I'm not really going to get into it you know, in this episode because I've talked a lot about some of the different crates of some of the different machines already. So because we just talked about warranty, you know, a machine with a long warranty without an established company to back it up is no warranty at all in my opinion. So what I want you guys to be concerned with is how long has a company selling the juicer been in business. Once again, there's a lot of Chinese imported juicers that are, that are fly-by-night companies. You know, they're here one day, they bought a container of juicers, they want to unload them, double their money, and then you'll never see them again. That means you'll never have warranty support, that means you'll never be able to get parts, and that means you just bought yourself a throwaway juicer. You know, and so that's why it's important that I offer juicers from established companies that have been, that are in it for the long haul. So for example, Tribest has been in business for over 25 years, as has Omega. They've been in business, they're probably the oldest company in juicing in the United States aside from Champion, right? Lequip, you know, that machine and uh, Kitchen Specialties or Kitchen Resource or uh, Lequip, Le Chef is what they're now called. They've been in business a long time in the industry as well. So all these machines are backed by solid companies that have been in business for a long time, unlike some of the new pop-up juicers that you may have never heard of before. Now, aside from how long has a company been in business, if they are established or not, and if they will continue to be here to support their products later on to cover their warranty, is how is the customer service? This is a very big, important factor, you know, because there's some reviews online that says, so-and-so company has bad customer service, and even if they got a warranty, you know, a long warranty on the machine, if the company does not honor their warranty or you have problems getting warranty service, the warranty is worthless just like the if the company went out of business, right? And there's been some challenges with some of the companies that I'm sharing with you guys today, but all I can say is this. If you are a customer of Discount Juicers and you purchase a juicer from Discount Juicers from me and you have a warranty issue with one of these companies here, as long as they're still in business, Owl, and it's a legitimate warranty claim, it's not because you stuck a knife down there and it broke or something, and you're not getting you know, a resolution through the company, let me know and I will ensure that you're getting taken care of. This is very important to me that the companies that I represent support you guys once you purchase a juicer. Now if you purchase a juicer from another company, I cannot give you the same level of support that I will if you made the purchase for me because you're not my customer, right? So go talk to the company that you purchased the juicer from to try to get warranty support if you're having challenges. And that get, gets me into the next criteria that you will want to take into consideration when purchasing a juicer is where should you purchase the juicer from, right? I would encourage you guys to you know, support independent people, independent retailers like myself that sell juicers that can give you guys support, that can give you guys pre-sale support, such as this video, that can give you guys post-sale support, like if you have a warranty claim. Right, that's going to help you guys out instead of a big box store that's just going to say, oh, return the juicer. That's not support, man. That's just pawning you off. That's like, it, it just really frustrates me that just so many juicers are sold 
and not only sold, but then returned because people don't know how to use it properly because the juicers, you know, you need to learn how to use them properly. And, you know, on many of the juicers here that I'm sharing with you guys today, I have specific videos on how to best use the Slow Star, how to best use the Green Star Elite. You're getting, you know, uh, uh, before purchase service, you're getting during uh, purchase service, like the tracking number and the information, and then you're getting post uh, you know, uh, after the sale service, you know, in form of me being your consumer advocate for getting you the warranty support if the companies are not taking care of you. Because I will get up in companies' faces for my customers if they are not being taken care of. It is important to me because, you know, as much as the companies that I represent don't like me saying this, I'm not faithful to any one company out there. I'm not faithful necessarily to Omega or to Trives or to Le Chef, Le Quip, whomever. Who I'm, faithful for, who I'm faithful to is who has the best product that works the best, that has the best warranty and the best service. And I don't care what company makes it. In some of these categories, you know, the machines are so close. I mean, Tribest and Omega, they're the two top brands overall in the whole juicing industry. And those, their machines go head to head all the time. You know, on some points, this one's better. On some points, this one's better. On some points, this one's better. On some points, this one are better. And it's for me to explain this to you guys so you guys can make the right purchase, right? And that's why it's important to support an independent retailer such as myself so that you guys can get the education because if you guys don't support me, I won't be here to make these videos anymore to, to help make the difference in the world that I want to see, right? So I want to thank you guys that have supported me in the past and more importantly, thank you guys in advance for supporting me in the future so I can continue my work with the education I do because it is an integral part of my job. I don't see myself as a salesperson. I see myself as an educator. And I want to just educate you guys about the truth about all the machines so that you guys can make an informed decision. Instead of playing the stupid smoke and mirrors game that a lot of salespeople and even other YouTube videos, you know, say. Because they don't know all the information about juicers like I'm deeply ingrained in this industry. Alright? So... Aside from where to purchase your juicer, once again, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work at discountjuicers.com. Another thing that's important is how long is it going to take to prepare your produce that you're juicing, right? People don't think about this because, once again, total juicing time is not just how long it takes to clean, how long it takes to juice, but how long does it take to prep the produce that you're juicing, right? Some produce you could just go out and pick in your garden and just run it through the juicer if it fits in the feed chute. Some things you're going to have to cut up to fit in the feed chute, so that's why a larger feed chute can be helpful. You know, some juicers, such as, you know, the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer, which is the first generation slow juicer, requires you to chop up your leafy greens and celery into small little bits and drop them in there, and it is auto-feeding. You know, the Lequip 215XL, I mean, if it fits in the feed chute, dump it in there, push it in, it's going to be juice. So minimal produce preparation is required. Now, some manufacturers try to stress the produce preparation part, and to me, everything's, you're always going to have to do some level of preparation to the produce. You know, whether you've got to make two extra slices to make it a little bit smaller to fit in a smaller feed chute, I personally don't think that's a major big deal. For me, what's more important is that the machine's self-feeding. I've already mentioned it before, but what really gets me and what I really don't like is actually having to put a carrot in this machine, this machine, or this machine. I have to sit there with the pusher, wasting my valuable time pushing the stupid carrot, <laughs> sorry carrot, in the machine and having the machine chunk off a little bit at a time. I'd much rather sit here and chop things up, grab the chop stuff, dump it in, grab the chop stuff, dump it in, grab the chop stuff, dump it in, and have it juice automatically without me having to waste my time to juice it. So produce preparation should be something you may want to take into consideration. Obviously the larger feed shoots are easier for that and for some of you guys this may be your first criteria and that's the whole thing I'm explaining all these criteria to you guys it's kinda of like in my order of importance uh, but you guys may have different orders of importances so you know once you watch this whole video go over your orders of importances and see which machines best meet your needs and buy that juicer that's that's the best juicer right there right if it meets all your needs and that's why I'm explaining all these things that Virtually nobody else ever does, and I apologize if it's so long. You can click the little, uh, you know, uh, gear in the in the YouTube below, and you can play me at double speed, and so you can hear me uh, talk much faster. All right.
Another criteria that's important for a lot of people is, John, how much pulp is in the juice that is created? As we know, the juicers are there to separate out the pulp <laughs> from the juice or the liquid nutrition of the fruits and vegetables. And the pulp that comes out is the insoluble fiber, mainly, that comes out of the machine. Now, now some of the juicers will put some insoluble fiber in your juice. <laughs> and everyone's a little bit different. So I'm going to start off with the most fiber in the juice of all the machines here. And I would say that has to be the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. In general, overall, it's going to put a little bit more uh, fiber in the juice from my testing. Now, next, it kind of gets a little bit uh, dicey as to saying which one makes more fiber than less because it depends specifically what you're juicing. So, for example, in general, the uh, L'Equip 215XL puts very little fiber in the juice because it has a nice, fine, small filter mesh that the juice needs to come through. Over on these guys, you know, if you're juicing carrots, there's going to be more pulp in the juice, but if you're juicing leafy greens, there's going to be virtually no pulp in the juice. And over on the Green Star Lead, it does a fairly good job because it has a nice, small screen hole size to put little uh, pulp in the juice for you guys. Now, the Slow Star, you know, it makes a moderate amount of pulp, you know, less than the Kuvings, but more than the Omega VSJ843. Now, many of the juicers uh, here also come with an accessory sieve or strainer so that once the juice comes out of the machine, you can sieve out the, uh, the pulp if you don't want it. So they give you the option to drink the juice with the pulp because some people like orange juice with the pulp and some people like their juice with the pulp. Some people don't care. And if you don't care, I'd say it's probably a good idea to drink some pulp with the juice. You know, I kind of don't like the pulp with my juice for whatever reason. And that's why I like the VSJ843. It pretty much makes a pulp-free juice without using an, an additional strainer. It actually doesn't come with one. The Green Star Elite comes with a strainer. The Slow Star comes with a strainer. And the uh, Solo Star 4 comes with a strainer. The other machines actually do not come with sieves or strainers. So you will have to purchase one separately if how much pulp in the juice is important to you. Now another thing that's important for many people is how much foam is in the juice. <laughs> now foam in the juice depends on once again many different criteria. In general I would say overall the uh, high speed machine Liquid 215 XL makes the most foam in the juice because it actually aerates the juice as it's being made. You know next I'd probably say that if you're you know it depends on what you're juicing and um, and in what juicer you're juicing. So for example, like if you're just juicing straight greens, you know, uh, this machine's gonna way, make way more foam than one of these two guys on straight greens. And I think this guy might even make more foam than like the VSJ juicing straight greens. But here's the ticket, here's the secret. If you're juicing straight greens, wanna reduce the foam, juice some hard vegetables with it. Whether that's gonna be greens and celery, or you know, and rotate green, celery, green, celery, or green, celery, cucumber, green, celery, cucumber, or you want to do greens, carrot, greens, carrot, right? You want to get something in there to fill the space between the auger besides just the greens because the greens don't really fill all the nooks and crannies of the auger and that's, in my opinion, why some of the excess you know, foam is created. Now, once again, foam is just basically juice with some air in it and if you let the foam settle for a while, it's going to basically settle into some juice for you guys. Now another criteria you may want to take into consideration, but in my opinion it's not super important, is how powerful is the motor? Everybody always likes like, oh I want a three horsepower blender, or I want a two horsepower blender. Now those of you guys that are, you know, electrical engineers and all this stuff know that it's not really possible to have a three horsepower motor on a 15 amp circuit and all this kind of, kind of stuff, which I don't really know about. But what I do know is this, all the machines here have a proper size motor for what they're doing, right? Now, because we're not pulling buggies and carriages, we don't really need sheer horsepower in juicers, in my opinion. So motor power is kind of a misnomer because you could have a really powerful motor and it'd be very inefficient and not actually transfer to how good of a product or how well the juicer, you know, works. So for example, like probably the most efficient machine on this whole table is right here. This is the uh, Solo Star 4 machine. It actually saves 10% more electricity than, say, like the Omega NC800 because it has a very efficient motor. 
and it's uh, with a uh, gear reduction, it's torqued properly. And in my opinion, the torque is way more important than just sheer horsepower in the juices. And I hope one day manufacturers will actually, you know, measure the torque at the auger and be able to quantify this so that people could compare this metric because I believe it is important. So, for example, you know. I believe uh, the Solo Star 4 between these two guys, probably a little more torque. And between these guys here, hands down, the uh, Slow Star juicer has more torque because I could put whole carrots in the VSJ and it basically would just stop because it just doesn't have the torque to snap that carrot, right? And I've never been able to really stop the uh, Green Star lead. No matter what I put in there, man, it just keeps on chugging along and cranking up and grinding up that produce in a three-step process. So yeah, you want to pay attention to uh, the power of the motor, but more importantly, how it works. And all these machines by the major manufacturers are generally properly manufactured, you know, to have the proper amount of power and motor power, despite the wattage. Some of the wattage may be low, 150 watts, you know, is really low, but that's good because it saves energy, but it has enough torque and power to juice. And I want to encourage you guys to watch and pay attention to the videos when I make videos when I feed in different things in the juicer and see how the juicer reacts you know if the juicer stops up I'll show you that it stops up and hey this juicer stops up and I'll have to reverse it and so that you guys can see with your own eyes you know more than just seeing a statistic that this juicer is super powerful because in reality it may not translate out to being efficient and it may not be translate out to actually working properly now another thing that may be important as a criteria for some of you guys when selecting your juicers how much does the juicer weigh? Especially if you're older and you can't lift up heavy objects, you know, which juicer's heavier, which is lighter. Wow, I think the Green Star Lead Juicer, that's probably the heaviest machine here. It's quite heavy. And uh, the Lequip is probably the lightest. And then maybe like uh, the, wow, that's even a little bit heft there. <laughs> these guys are heavier than these guys. You know, the Vertical is actually, they got some heavy duty motors in there to have that torque in there. But yeah, so. The weight of the machine may be an important fact for you guys, and all I could say is that I leave the juicer on my kitchen counter day in, day out, right? And so, like, I don't have to keep moving it in and out of the cupboards, and some of you guys might want to do that. I recommend, you know, move that toaster off your countertop, move that microwave oven, throw that in the garage, keep the juicer on the countertop, you know, so that you'll be more likely to use it instead of having to pick it up, carry it. Now, I know some of you guys travel. And you know, and some of you guys want to have a light juicer for traveling. I kind of like the vertical auger juicers myself for traveling because I want to take what I'm used to at home with me. <laughs> and yet, despite them being a little bit more weight, I mean, to me, that's not a major issue. And that's why this is kind of the end of the list. Another thing that may import, be important for many of you guys is the size or footprint of the machine. Some of you guys might live in a small apartment in New York City or Chicago or wherever. And you guys don't have a lot of counter space to put a massive, large machine like the Green Star Leaf. That thing is pretty huge, you know. Uh, the Equip 215XL actually has a very small footprint, but maybe even one of the vertical machines are even a little bit smaller. The footprint is how much real estate on top of the counter it takes. And so that's another reason why I like the vertical juicers, because they're not as large. I mean, the footprint of a, a NC800 is almost twice as much, maybe not quite, as a vertical juicer. And... The uh, Solo Star 4 is probably the most compact horizontal single auger juicer on the market at this time. So size may be consideration you might want to take into consideration before buying your juicer. Now the last consideration that came up before with some people, but it's not a major one for me, is what's the container catch size? So for example, the Lequip 215XL doesn't come with a juice catch container, it comes with a pulp catch container, but you can put your own bowl, I like to use a nice eight cup um, anchor hawking you know mixing bowl or measuring cup to catch my juice that same bowl will work on the Lequip uh, 215XL it'll work on the VSJ843 it'll work on the Kuvings Wholesale Juicer it'll also work on the Slow Star but it won't work on these guys or this guy because it has to be able to fit underneath this uh, hole where the juice comes out on the bottom so for that I'll use like a one quart or four cup you know, Pyrex measuring cup and under these machines uh, to catch my juice because I want my juice going in, you know, to uh, a glass container that's uh, nice and easy to clean. You know, uh, all these machines on this side uh, do include uh, catch containers, the uh, 
Try this, Green Star Elite comes with a glass container and all these guys come with plastic containers and in general the vertical auger containers hold approximately one quart which is a little bit more than these guys. Actually I think the uh, Solo Star 4 has a smallish catch container. But once again, you could use your own container to catch your juice so it's not a major consideration. So I mean, these are some of the top considerations that you guys now learn that I've explained to you when buying a juicer. Now you guys know this, you may be able to better select the best juicer for you based on what is truly important to you. What I would recommend for you guys to do is maybe like make a list of like the top five. And the top three would be like the most important criteria. So for me, the top three would be of course yield. If I'm going to buy a juicer, I'm going to invest the time to buy expensive organic produce. I want to yield, you know, a good fair bit of juice for my money. And besides yield, what's also important to me is the nutrition in the juice. That's like paramount. That's the top of my list. Like, I don't want to make a juice that is less nutritious. So, for example, in a high-speed machine, many people don't realize that they tested a high-speed machine, uh, you know, to, uh, compared to a slow juicer, compared to a high-speed blender, and they process broccoli. High-speed uh, juicer, high-speed blended broccoli, and a slow juicer. They got out the results from juicing or blending. They put that in uh, you know, a petri dish or test tube with live cancer cells to see which of the juices would be more effective against cancer. And they found out that the slow juicer, on average, had about 50% more cancer fighting ability. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, I want more cancer fighting ability because that's one of the reasons why I juice is to have the beneficial phytonutrients and phytochemicals and the protective qualities from the plants that the plants make, you know, based on how they're grown and um, put into me so that I could have this protection. And so people don't realize that a high speed machine, you know, you're getting less nutritious juice. And that's my, you know, second top most important criteria for me and maybe for you also. And my third most important criteria is how long does it take to clean? Because frankly, if it's too hard to clean, I'm just simply not going to do it, right? And that's why I choose something like the vertical single auger juicers. You know, they're a good, you know, uh, easy to clean overall, but they're also how easy to use. They don't take too long to use. And as much as this guy, the NC800, is so easy to clean, it takes longer to use, so your overall juice time is longer. And that's another important factor to me is how long does it take to use? And that's why I like, once again, for me personally, the vertical single auger juicers, because those in general are, you know, the most versatile machines are going to do the most for you, right? And they're going to juice most fruits and vegetables and, you know, leafy greens all fairly well. And they're pretty much the middle of the road, right? They make high yield, good nutritious juice. And another thing that's very important to me is, is the machine auto feeding. Like I mentioned it before, it's probably the third time I mentioned it. I really don't like the push the produce in and that's once again why I like the vertical auger juicers, right? So if some of these things, you know, rang out for you, like if you just want the most nutrition and yield and you don't care about the cleaning, you're probably going to want to get the Green Star Lead. If you just, just want it fast, everything, and you won't do it if it takes over five minutes, then you want to probably get a Lequip, right? 215XL. But if you want a good compromise like I do, you're going to want to go with one of these guys. And, you know, frankly, I'll put a link down below to a video that these two guys right here, the Slow Star and the Omega VSJ843, are the best vertical single auger juicers on the market that I've tested to date. So yeah, so hopefully after watching this episode, you're gonna know more about some of the criteria you will want to take into consideration. You will be able to like shuffle through the criteria and find out the best juicer for you. Take a look at some of my other videos so that you guys could, you know, drill down and find the best juicer of that category so you guys will truly have the best juicer. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please give me a thumbs up to let me know all the more episodes in the future. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes. I have new and upcoming episodes coming out every, I don't know, five to seven days. Aspects of juicing, dehydrating, blending, using the equipment, reviewing them. And then also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes, over 400 episodes now, are a wealth of knowledge about juicers. If you watch all my episodes, you will know more about juicers 
than most people sell in juicers, which in my opinion is quite sad. Also, I want to encourage you guys once again to support me and my work by making your purchase at Discount Juicers. If you want to learn more about one of these juicers that I've shared with you guys today, look down in the description below. I'll have links to each one of these machines so you can learn more about them and purchase them at Discount Juicers. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this entire video because I know a lot of people bailed out before that. And you know, this shows me guys that you guys are serious about your health, serious about getting the right juicer, and I'm glad you guys made it to the end. Anyways, I gotta get running. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. All right, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we another exciting episode for you. And what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna compare the all new OMG 500S, which is Omega's centrifugal ejection style machine that runs 11,000 RPMs in the high mode against the Omega BSJ843. Now, I must let you guys